Hello and welcome to NDL Training. My name's John Foster and I'm the NDL National Sales and Training Manager. Today we want to spend some time going over ball valves. But before we do that, some of you may not know who NDL is. NDL actually started back in 1998. We started as an engineering consulting firm. We're a Canadian company located in Vancouver, Canada. And we started by doing refrigeration, air conditioning, engineering in North America and New Zealand. We soon discovered the need for a robust refrigeration fitting. From that point, we became a manufacturer. And now we are a world-class manufacturer. We produce ball valves, ACR fittings, air conditioning fittings, PVC, gas connectors, filter dryers. NDL manufactures a world-class ball valve and we have special characteristics to our valve. The first one is that all of our ball valves are full port valves. What that means is you get full flow, full capacity. We do no reduced port ball valves. If you've got a two and five eighths ball valve, your fitting end is gonna be two and five eighths. The bore on your ball will be two and five eighths and the brass body will be two and five eighths. Most of my competitors start with reduced port ball valves at two and five eighths, which means if you want full flow, full capacity, you've got to go to the next size higher to get that, which means more work, more cost for you. Secondly, seals and seats. NDL only uses 100% virgin Teflon. We use no synthetic seals. We use no hybrid seals. So what that means is you get a virgin Teflon seal on both sides of the ball, two in the stem and one in the cap. Now, why the significance of Teflon seals? If you've ever done a store change out and you've used a ball valve that's had synthetic seals in it, you realize that when you evacuate the system or the system runs dry, the seals shrink. With Teflon, the seals are tough, they're oilless, so that you end up with a ball valve that will not have a seal that shrinks. You don't end up with ball seal leaks. That's important for you. It saves you time and money on a job. It's also important for your customer because it saves him money on a job and it saves him refrigerant and it saves our environment. Now, on our stem assembly, we do something different there, rather unique. Most manufacturers install the stem from the top down. That allows you to have some play in the stem, which means if you have built up pressure in the valve, you can actually blow out the stem or you can have a slight leak through the stem. We insert our stem from the bottom up. That means the crown of the stem seats against the base of the stem housing. Then we put a lock, a lock ring on there and then we put a torque nut. Now the torque nut is important. That torque nut is on there to hold the stem in position. So if you loosen the torque nut, you're gonna to have to re-torque it. You'll find that on the instruction sheet, which is packed inside the ball valve. We ask you to read this, follow the instructions. First on brazing application, wrapping the valve, directing the heat away from the valve as you're brazing it. And then secondly, there's a box here, and that has the torquing instructions. That's the torque value that you will need to set that torque nut to. So if you loosen the torque nut, just remember you're gonna to have to retorque it back. If you don't, and you're trying to tighten that down and you end up with a slight leak, and you put the cap back on and you tighten down on the cap, you're not gonna cure the problem for the leak. What happens is you put downward pressure on the stem, which causes the leak to grow. So just torque the, stem, the torque nut back up to the stem. Additionally, we only oven braze our ball valves. Now you say, what's the difference in oven brazing and robotic brazing? Well, with robotic brazing, 
you've got a coil of copper that you're, you're heating up and you, as it goes around, you're ending up with multiple passes. So you could end up with pinhole leaks that you wouldn't find in your leak check technique. And then you'll find them when they're on the job site. By using a solder ring and putting it into the valve, then putting the ends in and heating the valve evenly in a brazing oven, we find we get an even, nice braze, so you end up with no leaks. We also put a base foot on the valve so that if you want to avoid vibration, you can put a clamp, which we include in the polyseal bag that we wrap the valve in. There's a, there's a clamp with two screws in it. So you can put that on there, tighten it down so that you won't have any vibration. Now, all of our ball valves from one quarter through five eighths, and this applies to refrigeration, air conditioning, and mini split VRF systems are rated at 900 PSI, which is perfect for 410A. Additionally, we use the ACR copper that we use on refrigeration for our tube ends. So that actually gives you more than 900 PSI on the tube end. Finally, when we're finished with our manufacturing process, we test all of our ball valves with a 95.5 nitrogen hydrogen solution. That's because it's a smaller molecule than either air or refrigerant. And if you're gonna have a leak, you'll wanna find it in the plant where it's less costly to fix it or condemn it than out in the field. So we, we pressurize the valve to 450 PSI, put it through a tent, and we wait to hear if there's any leaks. If it passes the test, we put a serial number on every ball valve. On the sleeve, between the stem and the access fitting, we put a serial number. We're the only manufacturer that does a serial number on our ball valves. That is to ensure quality. Once we finish with that, we poly seal bag every ball valve to ensure that it's as moisture and debris free as possible when it comes to the job site, so it saves the customer time. Now we make a variety of ball valves. We make sweat with and without an access fitting. We make flared with and without access fitting. This is basically for the mini split VRF systems. One additional thing that we do is that on ball valves that have access fittings, usually within the first 18 months is when you're gonna find a leak in the access fitting. And that's because the seals dry out on the core of the access fitting. So what we do is we make a cylindrical cone-shaped Teflon seal that will not dry out. We put that on every ball valve to ensure that you don't have a leak through an access fitting. On the VRF ball valves, whether it be sweat or flared, we offer it in a kit with an insulator. On our flared ball valves, we offer them in a frost-free nut configuration. We do that at no extra cost to you. We understand that up in the Northeast and the Northwest, when these units are running under heat pump configuration, you can build up air underneath that nut and that air will condense. And if it condenses enough, you can end up with an ice ball. Well, rather than have a problem where your nut cracks or it backs off because you forgot to torque your, your flare nut, we put holes in that nut so that the air can escape, the moisture can escape, so that you don't end up with that I issue. We also make a ball valve in the configuration to work with the zoom lock fitting. It has extended ends on it so that you can slide your fitting on. You've got room to bring your, your hydraulic jaw on and make your crimp on that valve. Once again, same standard that we make with all ball valves, quality. So we invite you to explore NDL. And if you have any questions, we invite you to contact your distributor your distributor salesperson, or you can contact NDL directly. We're on the web 
www.ndlinc.com or you can even contact me directly. My cell number, 770-823-7582. We hope that you'll explore NDL. Give us a try. You won't be disappointed.